この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here today to start Nise Monogatari. I do not know how many episodes I'm going to watch. I do know that the first arc is seven episodes long, I think, and we're not doing that.、Um, But we're gonna, shoot, we're gonna shoot for two or three and stick with about two or three、uh, episodes per video for the future.、Um, unless there's a specific episode that I have a ton to talk about or I have a cliffhanger and must watch the next one or something like that. But、um, about at the end of discussing the second episode, I'll figure out whether I w a n t to watch the third one. You already know this because you will have seen it in the title and, and stuff. So. I don't know why I'm mentioning it any, at all. Anyway,、um, so, so this is a bit interesting. We're jumping back, I think, four years production time from 2016 to 2012、uh, from Kizu to Nisei. And we are, I think, directly continuing chronologically from where we left off in Bake, I think. If not, then we'll find that out, I think, at some point soonish. But.、Uh, I believe that this is just a direct continuation of Bake,、um, but with a bit of a different focus. I know just circumstantially that the focus is on the sisters, on, on Aragi's relationship with his sisters. I don't know whether that's like the actual centerpiece of the show. Actually, I don't, I don't really know anything. I know that their names are in the, the arc titles. I think it's Karen B and Tsukihi. I forgot what hers was called, but we'll find out eventually.、Uh, I'm kind of excited to get back to the more episodic format of the, the Monogatari series. It's fun and enjoyable. And、uh, as much as Kizu is a really awesome standalone piece of art and technology,、um, I've kind of been missing the, the fun stuff, the, the goofy episodic stuff. So. Glad to be back. Is there anything else I want to cover before we get into this? Not really. We kind of know where we are.、Um, yeah, let's get into it. So I've got Nisa Monogatari episode one. Oh, the, the name、uh, Fake Story or Lie Story or、uh, my anime list in particular came up with a nice portmanteau, Impost Story.、Uh, so. An idea of people not being who or what they seem? Maybe? Something like that. I don't know. We'll keep that in the back of, back of my mind, see, see whether it comes to fruition in any way or has some deeper meaning that grows and blooms over the course of the show. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. So let's, let's do it. I've got the episode up and ready to go. There will be multiple versions of this reaction video. You can find the picture in picture versions with the video up here and no discussion、uh, in the description. And a t i m e r a c e version on YouTube will have discussion after each episode and a beep beep timer at the beginning of each episode to sync up with your own version of, of Nisei if that's what you want to do. And that beep beep timer will go right here for episode one. Okay, we're in flashback letterbox widescreen. And. It does. Okay. And who did this to you? Oh. Hi, Senjo Gahara. That is Senjo Gahara, right? Yeah. This contrast is crazy. Ha! <laughs>
Don't do that, Sancho Gahara. Yes. <laughs> Gahara <laughs> What's in the bag? Nice No, <laughs> that's so mean. Oh, shit. What the hell is happening?
Okay. <laughs> Baka. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Oh. 
Oh, okay, that's a legitimate worry, yeah. Oh, hello. Uh, you can get something bitten again. <laughs> that white outline that she changed into was very uh neko Maybe not intentionally. Hmm, we keep blocking out his eyes. Okay.
please. <laughs> what a powerful world! What word? Oof. <laughs> Unabashedly. And there we go. Oz, kind of. Well, that sounds like the setup for the theme of the arc. It's kind of her nature as an entity. Hmm.
Oh. So will she get the dance she was looking for? Seems unlikely. What are each of them holding? Are, they, are those meant to be, like, in a subway? Or are they one end of a pair of manacles? Is there anything after? There are 30 seconds. It's preview. No subtitles. There are no subtitles for it. It's preview anyway. That's fine. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so when does this bit stop? It stops with the OP at six minutes in. And then we D letter box. Interact with sister. Interact with Hachikuji. And that's that's it. There are like there are three scenes in this episode. Scene one Senjo Gohara and Araragi. Aragi is in chains, supposedly done by Sancho Gahara, who is doing it nominally to protect him. And it's in the past. Sort of. And then scene two. Set up the situation where he's supposed to be, what is supposed to be going on. Have our first real conversation with either of the sisters. And then run into Hachikuji. And then the rest of the episode is just converse with Hachikuji. There's no explanation really for this sequence. I don't know if there needs to be. But I do wonder if it's, if it's literal or meant to be entirely symbolic. This scene where she crosses her legs with this this crazy, like, I, I, I'm going to use the word fisheye. I don't think that's the right word for it, but I think it'll get a, across the point that I mean. Just the, the way that everything is framed. Actually, it might actually, it might be a literal fisheye. But it's freaking awesome. The, the whole color palette of this sequence with the the... The bright blues on everything that fade that switch into these bright pinks, especially around Senjo Gahara. It's, it's almost the these are Evangelion colors. Uh, that might be weird to say, but if you saw my Ava reactions, then you know what I'm talking about. In a lot of scenes, there is either this type of blue light coming in, 
or this type of pink light, um, depending on the scene and the characters in it. So that's interesting. There was also a, a reference to an Evangelion reference in here, I believe. I don't remember what it was, though. I don't remember what it was or where it was. So, nominally to protect him is why she's keeping him there. I wonder if we'll come back to this and actually answer any of the, the stuff that's set up here. Don't know. Just don't know. So we get the OP. Um, I have, like, nothing that I have to read into uh, from the OP. Maybe there is some symbolism here that I'm mi just missing, but I see figures over text and and and... I like these cool, like, line drawings to represent 3D space. They're pretty cool. I don't know, I don't know if there's any deeper meaning here. We get some exploding title cards, which I assume are just text from the novels. They usually are. They're the central element of the story. I would not want to go into great detail. They're doing great, but he sucks. Okay. Fighter and brains. Hopeless imposters. Okay. Okay. Some interesting stuff there. What's our first introduction visually to, to Karin? Okay, so it's this symbol spinning, which is on her, on her kimono dress. Yukata? I'm not sure. Not actually sure what the difference is. Uh, and then that's our first intro to her. So, spinning thing, boom, cleavage. Like most women in, in the story so far, she's... Incredibly sexualized. Um, this is interesting. This shot kind of stands out to me. I'm not sure why. It feels like it's playing off of, off of imagery that is embedded in my brain and I don't know what it is. I mean, in terms of literal framing, she's within a lot of boxes. Then there are these scraggly wires that cover things, too, and these lights that give the impression of, like, uh, the, the lighting level or the catwalk over a, a stage performance. I don't know. Very pastel color palette around her. Actually, I think a lot of the episode, besides this... This first portion, which is all in, in ultra high contrast with like lens flare and and blown out highlights and really, really, really dark darks. But then the rest of the episode is very pastel and light and there's light everywhere, light shining in through everything. Pretty different. Uh, where's the first scene where we explicitly see Aragi's face covered? His eyes covered as though they're blacked out intentionally, but with white. I don't remember where it was. I should have written a timestamp. We'll come back to this in a moment. I think it's, uh, it's here. Yeah. So the this wall or board or whatever it is, it frames her face. But then it bubbles out his. There are still recognizable characteristics, so of course we know who's talking and all that. But the way that this is lined up with his eyes is almost as though he's censored. Um, and then it, it happens again a bit later. 
somewhere else. I think it's in here somewhere, but I don't remember. So that's curious. And then, okay, let's talk about the, the, I said we would. So we have this getting ready moment as he's prepping in his mind for the race that he's about to go on. Um, and arguing with himself over whether he should talk to Hachikuji. And doing this thing that, that Aragi frequently does where he's like, yeah, I don't really care about her or anything like that, but I suppose I must. When really he very clearly wants to talk to her and sneak up her on her as he has done before and mess with her. Which he then does, and she's horrified by it, as expected and as usual. The 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 continuous um, what's the word for it? I don't know. He continues going further and further. Let me kiss you more. Let me let me. Let me lick you more. Oh, jeez, dude. Oh, oh, that's like, she's like an elementary schooler, man. And he gets bit, because of course he does. She becomes symbolically a lot like uh, Black Hanakawa with the claw arms, claw, claws and stuff. So that's a thing. This moment where she snaps out of it is pretty awesome. Look at the way the, the, the light and shadow changes. All in shadow. This this is the color of her skin tone here. Lighter. Fully light. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. They have some conversations. Some of those conversations get get really referencey. Really self referential. Like uh, show that complained that it would never get animated, then getting animated. That's this. Uh, yeah. And then we have this discussion about courage to do various things. In this case, the courage to keep a secret to yourself. And an interesting layer on top of the theme that we've already discussed about, about like, Aragi connecting with people and the consequences of doing so. In this case, it's turning those consequences onto his family. That, And it's in a weird meta way. Like, if we bring too many characters in, that could hurt your family. We'll see how this gets explored as we move along. I figured that it's going to be a, a central theme. And then this, this wonderful conversation about... Uh, with stakes... High stakes for for the Araragi verse. Little girl panties, got to get some of that, uh, and the courage to do all these things. And then he turns it around and starts using it himself. And then it becomes kind of uh, like a a vague nod in the direction of uh, this this whole. But I have created a monster. You've used my own powers against me thing. Feels like a vague reference to many things at the same time. I don't know. Oshino's gone. Are you going to leave? Nope. And if I do, before I do, I'll come to say goodbye. Okay, I have no idea where we're going with this. I'm intrigued. The first segment seems to have no bearing on anything else in the rest of the episode, but it's freaking artistically gorgeous. Uh, the, the color alone, the framing, it's freaking nuts. It's amazing. I really like it. That shot, oh, that's so good. It's also kind of creepy. All right. Well, that's how we start a season. Let's continue the season. I've got episode two. It's up and ready to go. At zero seconds. 
And there will be a beep beep timer right here. Hi. And has been established as better at karate than Aragi. The blurred out thing in the top right corner. <laughs> A game? Okay, that's cool as fuck. So is it is it an egg that she wears as like a hairpin? Okay. <laughs> okay. This is gorgeous. And he's black and white. Hmm. Nothing like that. And it's very pink. Okay. That's not suspicious at all.
Aha. Hmm. Rara?
<laughs> Only occasionally. <laughs> huh. Uh. <laughs> I think you're on about the same level. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. It's over. You just got to sever that relationship and move. Hi. <laughs> oh no
啊。Depends what you're asking. Or that. Can do. What does that have to do with your hair? That's just weird. The glasses wearing secretary and the glasses wearing prince. <laughs>
<laughs> it's like it's like not being perverted is the worst fate for her. It's interesting. <laughs> Wait, did he just become Tsukihi? No, he just became Hachikuji. Whoops. Okay. So they do both have these egg things. Okay. True nature does not belie her appearance. More ill-tempered. Bits of near hysteria. There's one scene where we see an egg explode. Yeah. Boom. Interesting. My dear sisters, you two are hopeless imposters. And then this opening is almost entirely focused on Karen. Her her outfit and color scheme is B related, black and yellow. And this arc is Karen B. Don't know what that means though. This OP is is drop dead gorgeous. Uh there's this scene where like there's a B and it morphs into her hand. It's amazing. These these color swirly things are amazing. The the fire and just fire effects animation? is amazing there's some crazy shit happening i don't really know i don't really know i guess they are the fire sisters oh yeah okay so here she she morphs into a bee and then it morphs into her hand 
Whoa. That's nuts. I want to see it becoming the hand again. Okay, B. It's actually, it's a wasp. That ain't a bee, and then it just becomes her. Wow, that's freaking nuts. And she runs across this psychedelic plane with flames exploding everywhere, and it's freaking awesome. Bees everywhere, it's, it's awesome. This is really cool. Okay. Uh, let's, let's see what was in this text again. Older my sisters, mostly sported a ponytail, once dyed her hair, to a shocking pink. Okay. Mother slapped her hard in the face. Yikes. It's the only time she raised her. Okay. Dyed her hair back to black with India ink. Wow. She isn't what she'd call cute, but she is cool. Great posture. Seems five centimeters taller than she actually is. Doesn't wear skirts. Beloved messy jersey. I guess she's the only one who could still look cool wearing something like that. Okay. Cool. So we meet Nanako, who is very clearly uh, dressing up for this situation. There's something in the closet. She's got a secret, and we're not allowed to find out what it is. Interesting. I don't know what... We, we see this scene a lot. Uh, or scenes like it. Where'd it go? The one with the lacy stuff. There. We see this a lot. These are like lace edges of garments. Don't know what that's about. She's cute, but in an unsettling way. I don't really know. This is a fun conversation with... with Saruga. Introduced to... This is Karen, right? Yeah. We're introduced to her. She's weird. I don't know how to feel about her yet. She is taller than he is, right? Yep. Okay. We come in to... to... Suruga just being naked. And... That's a thing. We have this conversation, which seems to carry an undertone of, like, Aragi is teasing her because she's not actually as big a pervert as she thinks she is, and the things that she considers perverted are relatively normal, which is true for most sexual stuff. A lot of the time we think that it's a lot weirder than it actually is, because everybody's weird. So that's interesting. I still have no idea what's going on in terms of larger scale plot or purpose of this arc or 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 anything. By this time in Bake, we were already well on our way to to understanding and solving the specific problem of the first arc being the crab. Uh, here, we haven't really even been introduced to anything that seems like there's anything weird going on. Um, that's not necessarily a, a bad thing or anything. It's just a thing. It's that this is a different type of story. Uh, and I guess, I guess coming in from the outset, knowing that this first arc is like seven episodes long, I should have probably expected that, but it feels, it still feels like we're in exposition land, like setting up little details for a bunch of characters, a lot of whom we already know and bringing the sisters into this world, uh, so that we can then do interesting things with them, but I don't know if the interesting things have started yet and I just have missed them or if this is still in exposition land. I just don't know.
but I am intrigued enough to watch another episode. So so let's let's do that and see where see where we go from here. So, episode 20, uh, uh, 23, episode 3 is up and ready to go at zero seconds, so let's get into it. Beep, beep, timer goes here. Okay, so we're still doing clean up. Do you? That's not very nice. Ugh! Probably. Hmm. Huh? Ah, okay. Probably. Suddenly, I'm worried about their relationship. Oh. No. <laughs> Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay.
This is the same as the first OP? I think so. Completely different visuals, though. Wait, they're not completely different. What? Hmm. Who are you? What are you, Kaiki? It's the first male character we met besides Oshino. So why are you here? Ha. All about money. Club. He leaves the world red. Yeah, he reminds you of Oshino, but no. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that would have been totally weird if I hadn't seen Kizu. Okay.
Yeah, like everything turning red. Yep. Okay, things just got a lot more interesting. And there's Senjo Gahara. And is this how you got yourself chained up? Ooh. Classic. <laughs> Still happened though. <laughs> yes, it is. That's also her gag. That's also a joke, right? Oh. Whoops. Oh, the grandmother. <laughs> so he did. Okay. Okay. Ah. I believe it. I believe that too. <laughs> uh huh.
<laughs> uh huh. Sure. Yes, you did. Got him. And that brings us full circle to here, I guess. That sounds like a yes. Interesting. Okay. These are all crucial locations. Hmm. Went to all kinds of, yeah. So he's a fake. Okay. Having lost something to him. Ah, there we go. That was a cool audio effect to emphasize that. Hmm. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> I 
And there go the chains. <laughs> Aww. Okay. Okay. So before we check out OP differences, which I'm going to do, uh, I want to see the screen with the text. Yeah, there we go. So my younger sister changes her hairstyle. Never for more than three months. Okay. Okay. Okay, even more ill-tempered. Gets into violent trouble, but it turns out Siggy was the reason behind it all. Uses you, Yukata, for pajamas. Okay. No calming effect. Okay. Alright, so then the OP. No, 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 no. no. The OP. Right there. Yeah, alright, so 
yellow, blue, pastels, color, text, stapler, 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 legs, pink, green. Okay. Episode one. Um... Ah, same thing, just it's all... Ah! Uh-huh. It's all silhouetted. Black and white, the text is yellow, but she's just a silhouette. And they fill in a bunch of the details. That's kind of like what happened in the... Oh! We get a framework and, and a setup for, for a bunch of stuff, and then we, we change the way that, that we as the audience understand it and, and stuff. Oh. Okay, I don't know how these flower card things work, but Aragi crushes her. And everybody except for Aragi realizes that Twister is is really there's there's a reason to play Twister. And he, she calls Nautico the final boss, which is an interesting one. I wonder if that will uh, end up being prophetic, and she actually ends up being the the final obstacle of the season, or at least of the arc. That could be interesting. Uh, sexual pack, sexual act. Okay, into staplers. And then we go outside. This idea that, that, um... I'm I'm keeping in the back of my mind the idea that there are imposters scattered throughout the story. I don't know what form or or what that actually means. Uh but besides the obvious of calling calling Kaiki directly an imposter, there's also this this weird duality to each of the sisters' personalities and a duality to to um um I forgot what the next part was, but I had a sentence, and now I don't remember what I was going to say. Shit. Uh, each of the characters seems to have a flip side, which we already know about for a lot of them, but maybe we'll know more. I don't know. So then, then we get a hell of a tone change. So we go from a, a happy goodbye to holy shit, everything looks like it's out of Kizu, uh, out of specifically the promo art for Kizu, with the the bright red everything and the the trees and stuff, and we obscure this guy's face almost completely for as long as we possibly can, and position them on opposite sides of a divide, like a chasm in the road that seems to be filled with water. He's got a a club uh, in red on all black. This sort of Wolverine hair. Yeah, we trust this character. He's he's cool. He's probably a good dude. Polite for a child these days, as though he's experienced children in other ages and other times. So Pure Mystery. I had heard that the Gaian child lived there. Uh I wonder I wonder if that actually does mean Kambaru. I haven't anything to do here, but I thought I might take a look. See, he makes this assumption that that would be Kambaru's maiden name, and and therefore the guy and child would be Kambaru. But I'm not sure if that's accurate. Uh, we have no evidence like shown to us that makes us believe that that this inference is correct. So. I almost expect Aragi to make decisions based on that inference and for it to be revealed that it's not correct. I don't know. And he says some stuff about not detecting that much aura. One third, I'd say. 
it won't cause problems if I ignore it. And then he he rephrases that to I have no choice but to ignore it. Unfortunately, there's no money to be made, which kind of calls back to something that I think uh, Hachikuji said earlier, that it was it's all about the moolah, although that was sort of self-referential and I think trying to reference the idea of like artistic pursuits like creating something like this are all about the moolah. I don't know. Lesson for me here is that even if the truth is as one suspects, it may still be without value. So even if this seems like it's direct directly talking to the audience, even if what you even if your fan theory theories are correct, they're not necessarily valuable. So there could be a lot of misdirection, red herrings, random things that we don't expect uh, being set up here. Okay. All right. Uh, this is kind of cool how we understand implicitly that Aragi is comparing him and Oshino in his head like oh maybe another maybe a, a replacement for this Oshino and then he shuts down that idea uh all without actually really saying that he's thinking this guy is like Oshino we've got this 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 show of guillotine cutter who we know from Kizu but we wouldn't uh at this point so that would be neat if we didn't know I guess but doesn't really change anything and he's ominous and threatening. Definitely got that across with the swap to monochromatic glowing red and black dead trees. Definitely got the threatening part across. Okay, so then Senjo Gahara ignores Aragi. And he does a... Does a... a it's a... Oh, who, what's the character that actually does this in Akira? I don't remember. The... Slide. It's not the Acura slide, it's the... It's gonna kill me if I don't look it up. Tetsuo! The Tetsuo slide. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, okay. So that's the thing. I think we've seen this once before in Bake. Man, she is real mean here. And he's taken to calling her Gahara. I don't I don't love that. And then she steals Hachikuchi's gag. What's up with that? It's weird. Like, we're supposed to notice that it's weird, but not understand why it's happening. Weird. Calling him out on his popularity and his his harem. Restate some of the things. I'll kill you if you if you're with other girls. I'll also kill the other girl, and Kanbaru just so that you don't feel lonely. Then we come back to the purpose of the their 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 being where they are. You did missed meteors at Kanbaru's place. Yeah, you you kind of did. You saw her naked. Whatever, and. He says the word Kaiki, and suddenly, boom, here we are. At the beginning of the arc, this is how we got here. You said that word, Senjo Gohara got triggered, seemingly knocked you in the back of the head until you were unconscious, given the band-aid, and brought you to Blue Land, where things are blue, abadi abadai. She's familiar with Kaiki. He's one of the imposters slash con men from her past. And screwed over her family. We showed this Mr. Donut where we saw, uh, 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 Shinobu. Where we saw Shinobu eating donuts before she, before she arrived. At the end of Bake. Okay. And then this area, I believe, is where, where one of the confrontations with Black Hanakawa happens. 
he is an imposter. Immediately important because we know that that links to the name of the story. He really was akin to them because he knows the supernatural really well. But we don't know what he's here for, what he's about, what he does, except that he has conned Sancho Gahara in the past. And having lost something to him, does not want to lose Araragi to him. It's kind of a strange possessiveness here, but understandable, I think. Okay. Oh, and we go golden at this point. When do we transition to going golden? I guess once the, the truth is out and everything has been laid out, and we switch tone to Senjo Gahara as protective... And believably so, instead of somewhat antagonistic. And then the way this conversation is is set up, it kind of functions like the uh, the end of Bake, where she's like, "I'd we're going to go do this." Actually, I'd like or like. Do you want to go? Not nah, we're going to go do this. It's kind of like that. But in a different form. Actually, I don't think there's any relationship. I don't know why I brought that up. I could kill him. I'll go click on him. Oh, jeez. Little grope around. Gets the phone. Sister's in trouble. Instant breakout. Badass as fuck. And then he says some stuff, and Sancho Gahara is like, Whew, you got it, boy. And that's it. I have something else that I wish to protect. Yeah, can you boldly claim to love me even if I don't help someone here who is in need? Nope, got me. And then we switch back to blue for this call with purportedly Hanakawa. And we're immediately really curious about what's going on on the other end of this phone. This whole setup with uh, us in Aragi's perspective and him wondering what's going on on the phone... Let's us know everything we need to, which is that that this is curious and strange, and Sanjo Gohara is acting emotionally invested in something she's not telling us about. And then downtrodden here at the end as she agrees to do everything that the person on the other end of the phone says, which makes the the reveal that it was Hanakawa on the phone. weird and then she starts apologizing almost as if almost as if she's been ordered to hmm that's an interesting take maybe who are you just talking to it's hanakawa and it's a white cut okay so this feels like the arc actually kicked off uh with the arrival of kaiki and that everything else was to set up the status quo with a multitude of specific relationships between Aragi and other people before Kaiki comes in and and <sighs> screws some stuff up. Does that antagonist creating the story thing, which hopefully is exactly what happens. But I don't know. I don't I don't feel like this beginning to an arc has a like easy comparison point. Or anywhere in the rest of, of Bake, it's, it's totally different uh, in the way that it's set up. There's no no quick and fast, oh, it's this, It's we got to do this, let's go and fix it by doing this, and then we did it. Okay, uh, which has been the structure of a lot of the arcs per, up to this point. This has been kind of meandering in an interesting way, um, in a way that's like worth mentioning because it's different. Cool. All of the style and and enjoyable 
like blending of of sound and sight is all still there and still really great i just don't know where we're going with this but i feel like kaiki is going to be the answer to that uh he will create where we're going with this so i'm kind of looking forward to it i am not going to watch another episode because this seems like a solid place to stop and wonder as to where we're going from here on out and I don't know if I'll do the next, I believe there are four episodes left in the arc. I don't know whether I'll knock them all out or do them two and two. Um, we'll see. In any case, this has been Nisei Monogatari, episodes one, two, and three. We've set up relationships between Aragi and Sengoku, Kambaru, Senjokohara, both sisters, Hachikuji, we touched on it as well, and Hanakawa has not appeared in the flesh yet, but has been talked about, I believe, in every episode so far. So, that's interesting in and of itself, that Hanakawa hasn't appeared. Huh, just realized that. Hmm. Okay. But she is still influencing the story, as she was just on the phone with Senchokahara, and was brought up by, I believe, Hachikuji as, like... I would expect you to marry her. Uh, or was that by Kambaru? I'm not sure. I don't remember. Interesting. So yeah, we've got this status quo set up. We've got this one really, really different scene where Kaiki shows up and is ominous. And uh, that's it. Eventually an explanation for why Araragi was chained up in, in the cram school by Senjokohara. Everything sort of makes sense. Now, what do we do with what we've made sense of? I have no idea. I have no idea. Hell, I don't even know if Kaiki will actually be a villain. It could be a misdirect, but I don't think so. I think it's pretty straightforward that he is villainous to some extent for some reason. Just lots of questions. And a good number of episodes to answer however many of them they want to answer okay well i'm hyped for next week that's where we'll leave off i've been tiubu this has been nisei monogatari one two and three i hope you've enjoyed it as much or more than i have and i hope to catch you next week in the next one which will be four and five or four five six seven some number of episodes cool cool peace